Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Folk People. My name is Maddie Leadham and tonight we're going to be bringing to you a five-piece up-and-coming folk band. Formed at the Leeds College of Music, this group have taken their folk education and formed an incredibly unique and professional ensemble whose sound is as enchanting as it is technically impressive. The group have a varied repertoire consisting of traditional tunes, arrangements and originals, all of which they interpret to create a sound that's recognisably theirs. Each member a soloist in their own right, the amount of talent this band encompasses leaves me without doubt that they will be a force to be reckoned with in the future. And I'm absolutely delighted that Homestage has the opportunity to bring this band to your attention, because honestly, the sooner you hear about them, the better. And on that note, I would like to welcome the wonderful Hellion to our online studio. So hello, Hellion. How are you doing, everyone? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. And we should usually have Che, but he's got COVID, so he can't join us, unfortunately. But let's go straight in. I want to ask a question to kind of get everything warmed up. And I first want to explore, why are you called Hellion? <laughs> that is a great question. Anybody? I'm going to yeah. get Ben with this one. Like ben is good at explaining. So, yeah, we were looking for a band name for so long and we couldn't think of anything. We were coming up with all these different ideas and it was really difficult. And then we kind of got to this point where we were in Meve's kitchen and she just made us like the seventh cup of tea for my mapping names. And we just realized that everybody was wearing like sunflowers and yellow and really like positive things like that. And Hellion um, is, is short for Helianthus, which is the, the name for sunflowers. Um, and, and we kind of really all love the idea of sunflowers and being like, you know, reaching up for the sun and, and that kind of thing. So we decided we'd call ourselves Hellion and, and, uh, in, in homage to sunflowers. Oh, lovely. It's a very wholesome description <laughs> and reason why you've got it. Okay, so now we know that, let's have your first song so that people can hear the music so the first one that we've got is it ain't easy um could one of you guys tell us about the song before we hear it yeah this song um was written by uh, jane rushton and it's about immigrants and immigration and and um it's talking really about being displaced and we really loved the song it has a lot of uh, powerful imagery but the, the song is actually kind of flip reverse because um, Rhiannon and I are singing it and we flipped around the harmony and the melody a little bit in our arrangement, which was really interesting. And we loved in the song, the, the theme that we were working on in that year of learning songs was water and, um, and, and displacement really. So it fitted perfectly because it's such a, a good story but also has some really good real life relevance. Oh, 
close together to keep each other warm. You held my hand so tightly, you were fearful of the storm. And no words passed between us, there was nothing to say. where you've grown, all the people you've known, and the roots you set down. It ain't easy. When you're sitting on the sofa, watching 24-hour news, remember this is not a life that anyone What a beautiful song, guys. And, you know, I was really surprised with the instrumentation there because you see all of your instruments, you see this big band and you expect a huge sound and this just a lot of noise. And somehow, between all five of you, you manage to maintain this sort of delicacy and this gentleness. Um, and you are kind of approaching sensitive, difficult topics. It can be really hard for some people and you approach it in such a, a delicate way. And I think that that's just, that's amazing um, and really powerful. Um, so I'm a big fan. And the bit where you all went a cappella gave me goosebumps. So thumbs up from me, <laughs> really liked it. Okay, shall we um, explore now a little bit about how Hellion came about? Um, so you're all very varied as we've seen in instrumentation, but also in the location of where you're all from and everything. Can I just quickly go through each one of you and you just let everybody know where you're from? This will all become clear in a minute. Um, so Neve, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Exeter in Devon. Lovely. Rhiannon, where are you from? Uh, so I'm from a little town in the black country called Stourbridge, along with our poorly guitarist. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're representing him today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then... Ben, where are you from? I'm from Staffordshire. Stone. Mm, represent. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and Alana, where are you from? Um, I'm from the countryside in Herefordshire. So as you can see, our audience, they're all from very, very varied places dotted all around the country. But Hellion came about, am I right, guys, in saying that Hellion came about because of your university, Leeds College of Music. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? 
Um, so in our sex, so all of us were in the same year. So in our second year, we um, had this like module where you get put into bands. Um, and so we all got put together. Well, mine is Alana, but Alana is just wonderful and incredible. So we just had to have her anyway. So we grabbed her for ourselves. Um, so me, Rhiannon, and Che and Ben were all put together. Um, and that's where we started um, realising kind of the sound that we we make together and everything like that. And it's just kind of blossomed from there, really. So was it mm. lecturers slash module leaders mm. that put you together? Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh my gosh, they mm. obviously have very good intuition. They their monies, they get their money's worth there, or you get your money's worth, whatever. But they they obviously knew who to pair because you you work really well together. It's really good. Um, but you're not all on the same courses, are you? No, so um, me kind um, of not. Yeah, me, Rhiannon and Che, we all um, study the full folk degree. <laughs> Sounds like the full English. <laughs> anyway, the full folk degree um, at the conservatoire. Um, and then... Yeah, I do major classical minor folk. So all of the kind of like studying is in, in classical, but all of the performance is in folk. Um, and I'm kind of the same with Ben, but my major is in um, popular music and then my minor is in folk. Amazing. So then what does the ensemble module actually look like? That's where um, we play together so... as a band. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, yeah, so it's basically <laughs> where where we come together and we play we play together and we write together and compose and do arrangements of things and it's the real practical side of of the course really fantastic it sounds really great and obviously it's it's wonderful if it is able to put a band together like this because you guys are you you you're officially now a band you're going out there aren't you and into the world of folk as hellion spread your wings from mm. university sort of thing um and the fact that the opportunity has obviously come out of, of your course is just fantastic. Um, so how are you like assessed in this in this module? Um, I'll throw it over to, I don't know. I don't know. I can't say because I don't know who knows how to answer best. I'll let you decide. <laughs> um, yeah, our assessments, um, they were a little bit different for our second year because COVID didn't let us do public performances. So we had um, recorded performances, which were really a good opportunity for us. It really turned out really nicely because we got to record all of our tunes and we got some nice uh, videos from them. But um, the they also added like a viva. So we had to talk about our tunes and the history of them and why we were doing them, what we, what we were doing in the band and how that worked together with everybody. Um, and then after that, the assessment is public performance. So it's just um, basically go out and play your tunes. Lovely. Honestly, that is, it sounds like the most perfect module in any uni. It's just, just kind of jam with your friends and then be assessed mm. on it. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, so shall we, we've, we've heard a little bit about you guys. Should we have your second song uh, before we delve a bit deeper? Now, this next one is a couple of tunes and it's Farewell to Wally Range and Back to Belfast. Um, I don't know who is best again to describe this, but can one of you just tell us a bit about it before we listen? Alana. <laughs> okay. um, so, so yeah, this is Farewell to Wally Range, um, which was written by Malcolm and Goldrick. Um, and we paired it with Back to Belfast um, by Barry Kerr. Um, and I think it was really fun to kind of um, explore arranging um, tunes which kind of follow the kind of traditional um, kind of structures but they're composed by modern composers um, and it's, it was just a really fun set to kind of arrange and to play and it has it's, yeah it's just there's just a lot of kind of power in it I think um, and yeah we, we love playing this set and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Brilliant. Really, really love those tunes. And I love the transition between the two because there's nothing I love more in a folk song or folk tunes than when it feels almost like the beat drops and it just gets like faster and a lot more energetic really quickly. Um, it just really, really psychs me up. Love it. But how did you find them? Or as a band, where did you find these two tunes? I think I was listening because I'm obviously playing um, flute at the minute and um, looking at a lot of different flute players. And I think that may be how they both came about because uh, the second tune, Back to Belfast, was also found, um, it's on Brian Finnegan's album. And I think it was his version really that um, spoke spoke to us, like we loved it. Just that, you know, that pure energy that it has, um, you know, that's the second tune. So I think it was just kind of like, through listening, you know, to a lot of kind of contemporary um, musicians and just, yeah, finding the pieces that we really love and kind of, you know, putting our own spin on them, own arrangement and sharing them with a new audience, which is really nice. Fantastic. And Rhiannon, how did you guys go about arranging the tunes? I mean, it's quite, well, sometimes we, we all kind of like learn the melody together um and it's kind of like it's quite nice to kind of bring the vibe of you know bringing like a session bringing a tune into a session and just kind of seeing what feels natural like the first couple of times but then kind of like really trying to build on like a structure and you know where where are the peaks where are the troughs going to be where can we like highlight different instru instruments and create like range and different textures and you know, different dynamics and stuff. So it's all kind of just this, um, I think it's very much like a, a group decision and we kind of come up, you know, it's not one person kind of heading it. It's really a, collab a collaborative experience. Yeah. So I'll, I'll throw this over to Ben now. Um, do you ever get some like sheet music or something? All of you practice individually and then come together and put it together is that kind of an approach that you would take yeah sometimes we do um the, like Rihanna was saying like the arrangement process is really organic it's a really living process that we're all together in um but we do you know practice solo especially I would say especially for, for Neve and I um we do like to have some dots occasionally um to to make sure that we're we're playing it right and, and we're going to be we're going to be playing it the same as everybody else um and yeah we do practice alone and sometimes what we found really helpful is recording ourselves playing and then sending it to each other and then playing with each other uh, that way so we're kind of still together even when we're alone mm. is that how it worked then over covid um because also you, you formed during the pandemic I just don't understand how then an ensemble can work. But did you use like technology and recording and stuff like that to actually be able to practice when you're all in your isolated homes? Um, shall I say, Neve, you you give an answer for that one. <laughs> yeah, we really did try and take advantage of like as much as we, we possibly could. I remember our first ever lesson together. We we hadn't met each other or anything like that, but we just had one person on um all of us are muted apart from Che. And Che just brought any tune to the band. And then we were like, okay, we'll just learn this tune. So Che just played constant. And then all of us were there, like, in our own little separate worlds, just, like, trying to play along with Che, just learning it alongside him. And we've kind of just tried, like, to use as much as we can, really, to, um, like, technology-wise, to get as much, like, material together and play together as much as we could, Um but yeah, it's been, it's definitely been a challenge, but it's been, it's been an interesting one to kind of work alongside. Poor Che, the fact that he doesn't have to keep playing and not hear you guys at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you've managed to get together now and it, it's obviously the practicing and the, the silent practicing with each other paid off really, really well. So it just shows innovation. COVID brought about so much innovation. Um, and so Alana, do you guys have, like original songs as well do you do you explore them yeah yeah we do um yeah i guess we kind of have a range of traditional and 
covers and originals. Um, and yeah, we've kind of we've been working on some new tunes recently, which are um, original ones. And it's what's quite fun is to kind of you know, because there's five of us, it's quite fun to kind of improvise together. Um, and just kind of it's really good to kind of to write material but also to kind of practice kind of listening to each other um, and so some tunes um, which we haven't really released anywhere yet kind of unreleased material um, they've kind of come about in that way which has been really fun um, and then also um, Rhiannon's written some and Neve's written some um, Rhiannon wrote the um, a song that I think we'll hear later on um, here called The Rolling Wave. And yeah. Fantastic. And like Rhiannon, what kind of things do you tend to explore in your songwriting? Yeah, I think um, often we are looking kind of like more at the natural world and how, you know, what what lessons we can learn from that. Um, but I think we said earlier, like the first kind of three songs that we released um, all had like this kind of nautical theme, this like theme of water. So that was kind of, yeah, another thing that I was working with in terms of like um, lyric writing. But I guess to me, I'm always kind of one step in kind of like the natural world and like the lessons you can learn from um, every season or yeah, and just kind of like weaving that into like human experience. Brilliant. Well, okay, I'm gonna ask one of you now. Um, I wanna know how you define Hellion sound and I don't know who best to ask. I'm gonna throw this over to Ben. How would oh, you knew- define the sound? To someone who's never heard you before, if you were gonna describe what- Yeah, what it's really difficult to pin yeah. down, isn't it? Because we we have the um the five yeah it it's really difficult to describe because there's five of us so um we can really change it really quickly um but i think the word that you used earlier delicate is quite a good word for it it's almost like um rhiannon always says that it's ethereal um <laughs> And I guess it's kind of an intimate sound. It's very um, special. It's never, it's never kind of extreme or or, or brash. It's always. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to blow our own trumpets, but it's always kind of a beautiful or a pretty sound, and that's what we we try to aim for. A hundred percent, I agree. The ethereal description, I think, is perfect. That's exactly if I was to epitomise it personally. And then the fact that you guys agree with my own beliefs just shows that your music really does convey um, you as a band really well. Um, So talking of music, let's hear a bit more music now. So we've got your third song. Um, I'm going to throw this over to you, Neve. Can you tell us a bit about the next song, The Mermaid of Zenor? Yeah, so... um... I did the arrangement of Mermaid Zena actually last year. No, first year, sorry. Getting confused my years now. I forget I'm in the final year. Um, so in first year, I did the arrangement of it. Um, originally for just me, a um, fiddle player, and then I wrote lyrics in case some dream that we had um, uh, like a vocalist to kind of come along. And I wrote it based off, um, there's a harpist called Regina Everdeen. And she did like a classical harp solo um composition called the mermaid of zena um and so i kind of i absolutely fell in love with it It was beautiful so i listened into it more then kind of went into like what was the mermaid of zena looked into all like the folklore stories about it um and then wrote some rough lyrics kind of around it um but i'm not a very good lyric writer so when i kind of brought it to the band after kind of taking like the shape and kind of like similar harmony to what um, Regina used. I then brought it to the band, brought my lyrics to Rihanna and I was like, please help me. (laughs) I'm not very good at this. And so we kind of sat there and she um, made them like 10 times better than they they already were. 
um, as she, she's just amazing at doing all that kind of stuff. And then we worked on the arrangement as a band together. Um, so kind of not keeping exactly what I already wrote, but um, adding some more uh, complex harmonies, like, and just how to kind of shape it and add textures and dynamic throughout it. And as Ben's already said, like that is like a really organic process for us. So we kind of just sat there and we kind of like just played around some ideas until we found what really worked. beautiful song again and I love the whole um folklore thing the whole vibe like I didn't realize that you wrote the lyrics to it I genuinely when I heard it for the first time thought it was a traditional song that you found somewhere and had arranged um and that's what I was going to ask I was going to ask you all about the arrangement which just shows that you <laughs> you managed to disguise it very very well um so that's really really great and the tale of the mermaid isn't there like a like a bench somewhere in Zena with like a mermaid carving. Oh, I did some research. <laughs> so oh, that's, I think that could be the truth. Maybe there are mermaids. 
Um, okay, cool. Let's carry on discussing more stuff about the band. Um, so would you guys kind of describe yourselves as soloists in your own right? Like all of you, each soloists. Yeah? Yeah. So, I'd, yeah. Neve, I'll go with you. <laughs> Where, how does being in a band differ from being a soloist, do you think? Um, so my solo stuff is very different to band stuff. So um, obviously so with Hellion and everything kind of in groups, um, it's very folk orientated. Whereas all of my solo stuff, um, I use effect pedals and I kind of, I do quite a lot of writing. So about just, I, I like to kind of write around themes. So last year I ended up finishing the year writing like a little EP about space. And so I use my pedals to kind of like make kind of like spacey sounds. <laughs> and then this year I'm writing one about um, like the elements things like that. So it's all, it's quite different in terms of actual, the sound that I'm making. Um, but I think there's definitely elements within my writing that I then just kind of take little hints of folk and it always kind of ends up being slightly folky, whatever I do really. But yeah, it's definitely quite different to band stuff. Yeah. And Ben, what about you? How is being in a band different for you than being a soloist? Yeah, um, really, really different, especially for the cello, because uh, the role is very different. When you're in a band playing the cello, you're normally the lowest instrument. Um, so, you know, I can do a lot to kind of like texture, to add texture, to add depth to the sound, to add bass lines. I can do a lot of that kind of interesting work in a band setting, whereas I couldn't really do, I don't think anybody will come to listen to 30 minutes of bass line. So I can't really do that as a solo, but um, there's a lot that you can do as a solo on the cello. And there's um, a lot that you can do singing and playing cello like Neve. You can use a lot of pedals and there's a lot of um, self-accompaniment techniques. So it's, it's really, um, it's a really versatile uh, instrument. Fantastic. And what about you, Alana? Um, so, so yeah, I, when I play solo, I do a lot of fiddle singing, which is where I play the fiddle and I sing at the same time, um, which I also do in the band um, a bit. But I think what I find when I'm doing my solo stuff is that I, I kind of almost have to do everything just with me. Um, so all the kind of, I have to say if I'm singing a song, I have to sing the song and then back myself with do the kind of rhythmic accompaniment, the harmonic accompaniment. Um, whilst what's so nice about playing in a band is that you can really relax into maybe just one role. So maybe I'm just playing the melody and then I have everyone else kind of supporting with the harmony and the rhythm. Um, and we kind of change our roles with that, which is, it's just really nice. It's really kind of collaborative and supportive mm -hmm. flexible. Um, and flexible. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, all these like really nice varied answers, they make it seem very appealing to be in a band. Um, and finally, Rhiannon, what about you? What do you find is different being in a band than as a soloist? I, I think I just relish in like the, co the collaborative side of it. And I think it's like such a joy to be able to play with different instruments. I think when you're doing solo stuff, um, I miss I miss playing with other people like I definitely like lean like in my preference I lean way more to kind of like playing yeah with different instruments and yeah I think like playing with instruments that have like this real bass to them or or yeah just like a different sound it just it makes it brings a piece of music to life in, an, in another way which I really enjoy. Fantastic. Okay, now I want to um, explore how you're kind of supported by the Conservatoire. Um, so Neve, do you feel like as a band, as a new emerging young band, that you are supported and they've, they've kind of helped you along the way at all? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so within the folk course, just generally the lecturers are just all absolutely incredible and are 
there for you literally no matter of time of the day or if it's their day off and they're doing another job like you could literally just give them a little message and they'll just be there like in a, in a heartbeat to kind of help you out kind of thing um but I had a folk Rachel um she because of COVID we we usually have two showcases um a year but she's managed to do it so we have four this year so we've already had two and we've got two more to come up and so it just gives an opportunity for all the folk students um to to each like showcase different people perform and you can just showcase to other students and to the other um on different courses as well as a folk course and it's like a gig they put on for you and so you can kind of showcase what you're doing um and if you've got gigs externally to um outside of the uni they're always willing to help you kind of promote it they're always like oh let us know the date we'll be there we'll support and just generally like you can't get much more support than what the lecturers on the folk course really give you like they're honestly amazing really that sounds brilliant and what about Leeds as a city Alana how do you find that that's um, supporting you as these new emerging artists yeah um I think Leeds is it's a really nice place it's a really kind of has a really big and vibrant music scene at the moment um like there's kind of I guess in the kind of folk world there's there's a lot of sessions that we kind of go to and um and sing arounds that we kind of get a lot from and kind of the support from the older generation I guess um and then and then, yeah, like other kind of gigs and folk events that are happening, maybe in more of a um, commercial way as well. And yeah, I, I think we feel really supported and feel really lucky to, you know, be part of this scene. And we've got a a gig at the end of January, actually, in a lovely venue called High Park Book Club, um, which is kind of part of a um, a, a monthly kind of, folk um series kind of organization um so yes that will be really exciting and yeah i think yeah we're really enjoying it here would you agree with that then yeah absolutely yeah leeds is um, a really nice city to be making music in there's a lot there's a lot of music here and there's also um being at the College of Music here is really good because there's a lot of people that have come from here and are now staying in Leeds, still playing, um, like um, people from the folk degree here that we'll be playing with at the end of this month at the gig that Alana mentioned. We're really pleased to see um, other musicians similar to us. And like you said, Alana, seeing those um, older generations keeping the folk tradition alive is really special for us because we really draw from a lot from that and we want to you know continue that and respect it so we really uh, love to see that fantastic and Rhiannon would you say that the folk scene is different to your folk scene at home in Leeds is it different in Leeds yeah, I think like I'm I'm from a town really, so anything kind of on like a city scale, like you just get more variety and yeah, different pockets of uh, different kind of styles or genres or whatever. Yeah, I really enjoy the the variety you get here, and I think it's still kind of small enough to feel like you get to know people in the scene, and um, it feels accessible. It's like you know you can. You can get you can get on like um, you know we're we're playing soon at the the folk night at, at the top of the road so it's yeah it feels like accessible and friendly and like a nice a nice scene to be part of. It really does it sounds really lovely. Um, and Neve, I'm going to just ask as as a young band coming out, do you ever feel that you're at a disadvantage, or do you feel that maybe it's it's easier for you than others um I don't really I wouldn't say we're necessarily a disadvantage I think the main thing that's really possibly hindered us kind of gigging earlier is is probably the pandemic like we 
this the gig coming up at the end of the month um, is our first proper gig outside of the university. Um, but I think as as young musicians, I think we've got we really want to kind of succeed and kind of gig around and share our music with as many people as we really can. Like sharing our music is kind of the main, like so important to us. And we've really got the drive to do that after kind of, we have kind of a final year at uni when we finish, like we're hoping to kind of keep it going. And I, I wouldn't necessarily say we're at a disadvantage, especially with um, all the like help and support we have from like the people we meet at these sessions and like the lecturers, like, if they, they always ask what we're doing and things like that and I think the older folk generation kind of want to see the folk scene still kind of thriving and knowing that there is still going to be a folk scene in the future and I think they're really keen to get young folk musicians out there and they yeah this really really supportive environment for all of us. Do you though find that there's like a, a tricky line between the innovation of being a new band and wanting to pave your own way in the folk world, but also respecting that tradition that's inherent from over centuries. Do you do you find that there, that is a tricky line to to cross or to walk? Yeah, I, I would say I would say so because I I we definitely want to kind of keep tradition going and keep the the traditional tunes like in in the in the know how kind of thing. But we don't want to, we want to obviously modernise it and make our own kind of sound out of it, but not so much that it takes away from the real meaning and the stories behind these tunes. And so there is definitely like uh, like discussions and things we have to have when we kind of bring tunes in, like, okay, so how are we going to do this to showcase the tune and the story behind it, but also make it our own sound? And so yeah. there are definitely all those kind of, those conversations and that kind of difficulty, but it's it's definitely doable and also still with the way we kind of um like the songs you've heard previous and the one you're going to hear like next um the the lecturers at the uni also when we've kind of showed them something um they are very like good with like oh okay like this is something you could do or you could possibly do this so them with more obviously more knowledge than than myself with the the tunes themselves will be able to help us and kind of guide us in the way to make sure it is kind of in the right boundaries I guess yeah well brilliant um unfortunately guys we have run out of time and so we are going to have to bring this interview to an end but it's been so wonderful to speak to you all and I wanted to say a huge thank you for joining us out of your your busy uni schedule and for chatting to us and I really hope that Shay gets better soon um but for now, we've got one final song and I'm going to throw it over to you, Rhiannon. Can you tell us about this final song, The Rolling? Oh, The Rolling Waves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, The Rolling Waves. Um, yeah, so this was actually, um, it kind of, the catalyst for the, for the whole arrangement and the song was, um, was the tune that Che brought to the group um, called The Rolling Waves, like a traditional tune. Um, I think it's Irish. And we kind of like started by learning um, by learning the the, the the tune all together, and um, I had this kind of vision of it kind of just being it would uh, develop into like a song. So I, I I chose to have the song as like the same title, like in my mind when I was thinking about writing it. And I think the first line is keeping the rolling waves underneath. Um, but yeah, it was it was a real joy to write. Like I was looking at um, um, kind of like for inspiration. I went to like the Bodleian Library and was looking through like the old ballad um, ballad sheets, um, kind of like that were based on nautical themes. Um, so yeah, so that so I was kind of like looking there for language and um, yeah, how other people had written the song and yeah, it's quite a joyful song. In, in a lot of ways and yeah I uh, hope you enjoy it
Thank you very much for watching. To find out more information about our future Tuesday Folk People sessions, please sign up to our mailing list or keep an eye on our social media and website. Our next session will be a week from today at 8pm. See you then.